Okay, so on behalf of NUM International College and NUM Social Innovation Lab, uh, we're very pleased to have Mr. Bora Vut to uh, be our part of our guest speaker series this morning. With uh, 10 plus years of work experience with both startups and Fortune 500 companies, Bora is currently working at Microsoft headquarters in Redmond, Washington State as a senior uh, software engineer. During the past seven years at Microsoft, Bora has had the opportunity to work with various teams developing and building products that touch millions of people from around the world. Uh, those products include MSN.com, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Store, Dynamics 365, e-commerce. Prior to that, Bora worked for several Seattle area tech companies for five years. Bora received his master's of computer science from Maharishi University of Management in Iowa in 2010, and a bachelor's degree in computer science and engineering from the Royal University of Phnom Penh in 2005. We're therefore very pleased to have Bora with us um, this evening from Seattle, this morning from Phnom Penh, uh, to share his experience uh, about going global and working at Microsoft. Uh, yep. So hello everyone, uh, my name is Bora. Like Steve said, I'm currently working here at Microsoft uh, as a senior software engineer uh, and also living here around Seattle area as well. So that uh, convenience anyway, we don't have any sunlight very much. It's all rain and gloomy most of the day and probably many days throughout the years. <laughs> So uh, today, just wanna uh, share some of my experience on how uh, my study journey, my work journey, how do I get here uh, to the state and work here at Microsoft. Uh, as part of that, let me share my screen so that we can have some slide as just the uh, anchor for our discussions. All right, let's share. All right, so let me share my screen. Bam, bam, bam. All right, do you see it? Let me know if you don't see the screen. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Thank you. So just a little bit about uh, my background. So I graduated high school in 2001 from Sisawat High School right there in Phnom Penh uh, City. Uh, and then in, I went off to uh, computer, studying computer science at uh, OUPP and graduated in 2005. And from roughly around 2005 to 2007, I've been uh, working in some uh, NGO in Cambodia doing uh, web development work, helping them uh, develop their online presence there. And then around 2007, uh, I decided, okay, maybe this is the right time uh, for me to move on and then like kind of like uh, get more education uh, abroad. So I decided uh, to apply for the master degree at uh, Maharishi University of Management. Right now, they uh, name uh, they changed their name to MIU Maharishi International University. So from two thousand seven and two thousand nine, I was there uh, doing my master's degree, and after two thousand nine, uh, I graduated and I study. Uh, I started working around Seattle area uh, for some startup company and some of the Fortune five hundred as well. Uh, I used to work for Real Network. Uh, I don't know if uh, many people know what Real Network is. They are a company who's developing uh, some of the networking system uh, for uh, the most of the uh, bigger company to run on right now. And some of the uh, player for the Windows uh, computer to play some music as well. And uh, around 2013, that's when I started joining uh, Microsoft and then I've been uh, working there ever since. Uh, so throughout this whole journey of like uh, coming here, doing my master degree, uh, working 
with multiple uh, startup companies. And then uh, last one is Microsoft right now. There have been some rewards that I think that uh, that's been so uh, rewarding to me. So one is that uh, being a Cambodian and then studying in Cambodia, you finish your bachelor degree right there. More or less, I feel like that is something that really prepare me well uh, for my education here in the States. Uh, before coming here, I, I wouldn't have thought that the education there would be enough because I always have this perception and heard so many people say, oh, Cambodian education is not up to par with the international school out there. But somehow with all the hard work that uh, we've done in school with so many subjects that we've done and with so many theoretical practice that we've done in school, that really helped prepare you so much in uh, going into the master degree here. I find studying here is way easier than uh, studying in Cambodia because to whatever the exam that the professor or uh, the teacher gave you, uh, they all, the answer is always in there. As long as you study it, as long as you understand it, and then you just simply, you, you're gonna get a, like the good mark out of that exam for sure. Um, the second point that I feel like uh, that's so rewarding throughout my experience is the chance for me to meet uh, and sit down with uh, and listen to the top leader in both private and public sector. So you might have seen this picture on the left right here. Uh, some of you might have known her and some of you might have not. So she, her name is Madeline Albright. Uh, she's the first uh, female uh, Secretary of State in the United States serving uh, around Bill Clinton uh, uh, presidency in 1993 to 1998, something like that. So she came to Microsoft campus uh, on her book tour. And then I was fortunate enough to be selected as one of the participants to join in this private uh, book signing. Roughly about 20 people were selected throughout the company to go and sit there and have a, a quick conversation with her. And then uh, she would sign the book and then give it to you. Uh, the book that uh, she was uh, signing at the time, it, uh, the name is Fascism. She was talking about fascism uh, throughout the history, including uh, the recent history about the uprising with uh, all the political uh, uh, atmosphere around the world right now. Uh, I also got the chance to meet with Satya Nadella, which is the CEO of uh, Microsoft as well. She, uh, he normally would give out uh, speeches every month to all the employees throughout the company. Uh, and he would rotate across building. As long as you want to meet him, you can simply pop up in one of those buildings that he would be giving out space. You're gonna have a chance to meet him over there. And the rest of them would be Bill Gates and Trevor Noah. Uh, he's one of the late night show hosts, uh, if anybody uh, know about him. Uh, next one. Uh, one of the rewarding points that I feel also important to me is I got the chance to work and learn from some of the smartest people in the industry. Uh, I've had, I had some work experience back in Cambodia with some of the NGO and some of the uh, good people who has this knowledge about uh, development, about software uh, development and how things should be working. But work, uh, but coming here to the United States, uh, I got uh, to meet with so many, so many more smarter people who actually have built a large scale uh, application that uh, we're supposed to be used by millions and millions of users. And not only just like American, but so many other uh, na nationality who coming uh, all over the world to the United States who work here, who study here, and then who just like contribute back uh, to uh, the world through their skill itself. Um, last one is the, uh, I got the chance and opportunity to drive and be the product feature on where I work itself. So lastly, uh, at uh, Microsoft, uh, with the last project that I've worked on, I've had a chance to build the e-commerce solutions uh, for dynamic uh, customer. 
So Microsoft wouldn't have any uh, e-commerce solution as part of their solution to the customer before. But now with this solution, you can actually uh, create an online store presence, uh, either selling clothes, either selling jewelry, or any type of the product at all. And that is fully integrated with uh, the dynamic solution is, itself, including back office um, uh, support, including like front, uh, front store support, all of those will be integrated. And that is something that I've had the chance to actually build the feature and shape the product uh, to what it is and that the user are using right now. Uh, so out of all these rewards and the experience that I had, uh, of course, that comes with challenges that I have to fight through, that I have come through to actually either achieve or experience myself. So uh, some of the challenges that I've seen, uh, especially when I firstly uh, come to the United States for school are uh, the cultural differences. Uh, uh, this is, a, to me, it's a bit different than the culture shocks. Yes, uh, I before coming here back in the day around 2007 or 2008, there wasn't any like Facebook popularity. There wasn't Instagram. There wasn't any of the Snapchat or anything like that. So the only exposure I had uh, and prepare myself before coming here is either watching uh, this Hollywood movie about how life is in uh, New York, in, uh, in LA, and then uh, all of that, just absorb it and get familiar myself with how people are actually uh, uh, function here. But once I arrive, things, uh, especially when you come to school, most of the school, some of them are actually in remote area. So the school that I went to is in Iowa. And not sure if uh, many people uh, is, like have been here or know what where Iowa is. It's like in the middle of the United States and it's known for cornfield. Everywhere you go, you see farm left and right and corn farm pretty much. And that's totally uh, different from my expectation of like what I've seen in the movie of the sky rises and all of these things. So I kind of like learn to adapt and how they uh, people are living here. And surprisingly, uh, people in a uh, rural area are really, really nice. And I, uh, I remember one instance that I had to walk from uh, my dorm to uh, the supermarket, which is about like a mile, maybe about 1.5 kilometer or so. And one of the ladies just stopped by uh, on the road and she was asking, hey, are you guys, uh, are you guys student here? You want to take uh, get a ride from here to uh, the market or something? And then she actually gives you a ride without any hesitance and just take you off and drop you there. And she was actually waited and then uh, picked me back up from the store and then dropped me back off at the dorm, which was so uh, totally different from what I've experienced. I know we Cambodian uh, used to think that we are really nice and we are really uh, like down to us people. And this is surprisingly also uh, experienced the same thing on a different part of the world as well. And um, the other cultural differences I would want to call out is like sometimes uh, people are uh so from the work in the work uh, situation people tend to be uh providing you feedback right on the spot or straightforward feedback of course uh those are constructive uh feedback to make sure that you learn from that feedback and then perform or do better thing however on uh off the work uh talk of the work world when you are going to a party or you're meeting a friend and then it's gonna be a potluck or something, you cook some dish and then that dishes are so not really delicious, not really good. But if you were to bring it to the party, people's gonna still be nice to you and gonna keep saying, oh, this is still really delicious. Thanks for bringing it. If we put in our, uh, our context, it might be a different reaction there. <laughs> um, Second bullet point that I find challenging is uh, adapting to a new way of life here in the state. 
So back in Cambodia, I stayed with my parents uh, and they were handling all of the uh, electric bill, all of the food bill and all of this stuff. So my job and my uh, life is just pretty much wake up in the morning, go to work and uh, coming back, having lunch, dinner, shower, and then maybe uh, sharing some of the bill with them. But here, uh, coming here all by myself, I don't really have any relatives around. So I have to take care of my own in terms of like finding a place to live, uh, taking care of all the bills, looking for a job, finding, uh, figuring out how to ride a train, how to ride a bus and purchasing a car, all of those you have to actually learn and then figure out on your own. The good news is everything is all up on the internet right now. So if whatever you uh, think that you want to find out and figure out to do, it's convenient that way. Um, the third point, uh, the third challenges, uh, challenge that I find it's uh, also interesting is competition here uh, in the United States uh, is fierce. It's not just among our other people, it's also among yourself. What, what do I mean by competition here? Uh, let's pick an example of the job uh, search and job interview and figure out a career, your own career. So coming here after school, I had to, I had to actually uh, try out and then apply for jobs and uh, go for the job interviews. And before getting my first job here in the United States, it's just not a straightforward thing that I would apply one job, I go for the interview and then I got it. I applied for many, many, many jobs and that many here in the term of hundreds because uh, over here, if you just simply looking for like 10 or 20 jobs, your chances are low. For once you are uh, not a, a native speaker, and you are not a Native American. So you are not just competing with the rest of the field on your uh, technical skill. You're also competing with the rest of the field in terms of uh, your speaking skill, your comprehensive skill. So all of that have to come into place. So in Cambodia, uh, when you are seeing one job, you might have only, I don't know, 20, 50 applicants applying to it, uh, the max, but here, once you open a position, there can be like hundreds of people applying to it. So that's, that's what I mean by competition is fierce. So, uh, but don't discourage. I mean, we all can for sure uh, compete and uh, as with preparation and what we can do. And for after that, uh, we'll for sure prepare ourselves uh, for success. And in terms of competition uh, to yourself, uh, I want to link it to the next part of the uh, cultivating grow mindset. Um, we, so I, I don't know much about how uh, different person like tend to think differently, but back then in Cambodia, uh, the perception I tend to have is like most people would just like went to school, university, and once you graduate from your bachelor degree or from your master degree, you tend to like, okay, I'm done with studying. Now I'm just gonna, uh, gonna be focusing on work. But uh, yes, you can do that. And then after that, you can get a job and then you can actually uh, stay on your job and then continue doing work and then grow in your job. But uh, over here, uh, it's a bit different. People don't just stop right there uh, after they get a job. People don't just stop right there after they get a promotion. They always look inward and then see what else can they improve on themselves. What else can they uh, can they do better? That's what they call a cultivating their growth mindset, and they continue to learn from time to time, either a new skill or upgrading themselves, and then making themselves more. Uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, up to date with uh, the current uh, skill uh, the, on the market right now. So uh, I think that is some of the challenges that I want to point out and that what I've gone through and maybe I've been talking too much. Uh, I think uh, that is all what I want to say right now. 
and then next is probably I'm going to open it up for Q&A, either from Steve or from uh, other people as well. So uh, one thing, though, if uh, somebody asks a question, I would love uh, for them to give a brief introduction so that I kind of get to know uh, the person asking the question as well. Thank you. OK, so thank, thanks, Bora. So let's open it up and uh... Get some, who wants to go first for the first question? I have a lot, but I want to get our audience here asking questions. <laughs> There's always this quiet. Okay, so who would like to ask the first uh, question? Hi, Steve. I'm on. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, yeah, I can go first. Um, my name is Moni. I'm currently um, doing my master's in marketing um, at Holt University, Holt uh, Business School. Um, I'm still in Cambodia, but I'm planning to go to London soon. Uh, nice. My question to you is, um, I heard that Microsoft is a very diverse culture. So yeah. how many people Uh, you muted, uh, Moni. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. The, uh, the, <laughs> sorry. Did you hear me? The, no, the I didn't get the question at all. <laughs> okay, so my question is like, uh, I heard that Microsoft is a very diverse culture. Um, yeah. So I want to ask whether, like, how many nationalities are in your team and how do you navigate the cultural challenges, you know, um, the cultural differences and challenges that come with working with people from multiple backgrounds. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for the questions. Uh, yes, Microsoft is really, really diverse uh, uh, company. We have so many people from all over the world. Uh, especially in my team, we have American, we have Indian, we have, of course, Cambodian. <laughs> Uh, and we have uh, Chinese, we have uh, Nepalese, and we have uh, Russian as well. So uh, fortunately, Microsoft is a company who, uh, which uh, really encourage diversity. They have so many programs that encourage uh, either a female candidate, a minority candidate, or uh, all other candidates that are not uh, American so that they can actually diversify uh, their company. So the, the whole uh, idea of diversifying employee here is not just to get uh, different type of people to, to, to do the work and then you kind of like check off the list and then uh, brand yourself as an international company. Uh, that also play into uh, how that uh, your product's gonna shape out and then providing your product to the customer out there. So you have uh, people from uh, different countries uh, uh, that using the product. For example, Microsoft Word. This uh, product has been used internationally all over the place in any area of the world. So if American design it, they only have this perception of how this should work in the American context, but they don't know how that should work in Cambodian context. So uh, I can give you uh, some of the example uh, how I myself as a Cambodian play a role in help shaping some of the product here uh, uh, at Microsoft for the Cambodian market as well. So uh, back when I initially joined Microsoft, uh, they haven't fully uh, uh, putting much effort into uh, Cambodian localization in terms of like keyboard on how that should work in the Unicode world. But uh, starting from there on, when I joined, we had a Cambodian uh, community uh, email group here so that uh, the product uh, manager would send an email from time to time to an alias say, hey, we are doing localization for uh, Microsoft Word here. Would you guide uh, mine running through it, making sure some of the translation uh, actually uh, uh, makes sense? 
I know uh, we did we couldn't go through all of the localization in terms of like uh, the string that uh, goes into the product, but some of those string have been either shaped by uh, me or some other Cambodian uh, that uh, employee who are currently working here. So this is one of the example that uh, just uh, having a diversified employee within the company help shaping all of this. Uh, so what's your second question again? <laughs> Um, I was asking how uh, do you navigate the uh, cultural challenge? Yeah. Oops. All right. I think network connection issue. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll try to answer that one. So navigating the cultural differences at work, uh, to me, at first, it's a bit challenging. Uh, when I initially joined uh, the company, I was not uh, confident enough to speak out. I wasn't uh, confident enough to actually uh, provide my opinions to how things should work. So coming from a Cambodian culture, I tend to be a bit shy. I wouldn't want to raise my voice much. And But uh, from time to time, one of my, uh, I mean, um, I am good at observing people. So I'm observing every individual that I've been communicating with or working with. So I've learned from them in terms of like how they project their confidence, how they do the presentation, how do they uh, raise their idea and how do they debate their idea among the team member to make sure that their idea is being heard and then uh, being explained and then other people understood that. So that really helped me by observing how people are working and then uh, learn from there and then uh, use that uh, observant and project it back and then uh, and in your own way. I mean, you can copy them at first, but uh, it's always best to actually learn about it and then do it yourself and then uh, making sure it's coming naturally from you. And the second part, uh, to uh, being successful and navigating through the big company is having a good mentor and good manager. Uh, mentors can be uh, your own manager or it can be somebody that you look up to at work and then who you can talk to openly about whatever the work situation and ask for advice at all. Uh, I was luckily uh, got uh, like, at first, I got assigned a mentor through a Microsoft program uh, within the same team. So uh, at office, uh, they have the structure that once you got in, uh, you're supposed to find a mentor within the organization. Uh, if you haven't known anyone that you look up to within the organization, uh, you can also uh, get randomly uh, matched by uh, your manager. So your manager would look into your personality, look into you and your skill, your background, and then he's going to find someone that feel like it's going to be a good fit that guiding you that your whole career throughout uh, uh, your time there within the team. So. Uh, the person that mentored me was really uh, insightful. He was, believe it or not, he was so young as in like around my age, uh, but he's been with the company for quite some time. Uh, he's learned how to navigate around the corporate world and then uh, performing uh, his duty uh, at work, being a software engineer on what to learn, what to do in whatever situations. So I've learned a lot from that person from on my first job. And then from there onward, I got the opportunity to uh, having a discussion, get a frank discussion, and then uh, get some advice. In any situation at work that I face, I would uh, go back and consult with my mentor and then get some advice. And then even though uh, some of the problem or some of the situation that I faced already and I've solved already, I would still want to go and discuss with uh, my mentor to just get a second opinion and see how he would have solved it, see how he would have uh, faced the situation, whether it's the same as what I just did or is there any something uh, else that he would have done differently. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I feel like uh, that will help you a lot in terms of like navigating around this whole diverse uh, work cultures. 
Hopefully I answered your question, Wani. Yeah, yeah, you did. Thank you so much, Wong. Yeah, no worry. Uh, anyone else with questions? Try and get another question here. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Second question, Money. <laughs> okay, maybe someone else. I think I saw some movement, but let me ask while we're waiting for people to think about <laughs> their questions. Okay, let me let yeah, me sure. back here. So um, I, I guess I should also mention that I was very lucky to visit Microsoft with you, I guess about two or three years ago when I brought some of yeah. our students from the business model competition, uh, one of our top teams. So it was like an amazing experience. I remember it was Sunday and you gave us a full tour of Microsoft campus uh, in Redmond, just near Seattle. And yeah. in terms of Moni's question about diversity, I remember <laughs> the cricket field you had people playing cricket <laughs> there and i mean it was it was really it, it, it was quite diverse because we saw a lot of other family members visiting on the sunday when we were there and and yeah. certainly you saw that diversity and and obviously your campus is very cool the design the you know of all of the rooms was was just amazing to see that uh in terms of the education side um i know like a lot of uh, IT companies, they have speaker series, is, and you sort of mentioned that you, you met Madeleine Albright and other speakers. So how regular is that at Microsoft? Do you have like every Friday or uh, do you have authors, you know, well-known speakers coming on campus to give talks and maybe talk a little bit about the education side of what programs there are if you're working for Microsoft uh, that you benefit from? So yes, uh, I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, so the program that I went to that I met, uh, Madeline Albright, is now, uh, it is called Outside In. What they are trying to achieve from their program is they would introduce a different speaker once every month. Uh, mostly they tend to uh, stick with uh, the trend of whatever happening uh, either politically either uh, socially uh, 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 issues that are happening right now. Uh, so they have some one from the National Institute of Health uh, recently coming uh, onto the campus to talk about uh, infection disease and uh, similar to uh, the COVID uh, thing that, they, that uh, we are currently facing right now. But it's a virtual event due to the whole COVID thing that they couldn't do the uh, on uh, campus even anymore. And uh, I also call out that everybody is working from home right now. Nobody is going to the office doing any job from there anymore due to uh, the COVID situation in the United States. Uh, Yes, and there are so many other programs, either related to education or either related to activism, climate change. Uh, uh, what is the other one? I forgot. Uh, the, 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 the climate change and uh, what is this? Human rights uh, activisms and around education, uh, the company itself is pretty supportive uh, for the employee to continue learning and growing. They have a plural site uh, subscription for all of the employee. I'm not sure if uh, people is aware of what plural site is. It's an online platform. Uh, they have a lot of training video. Uh, it's similar to uh, Khan Academy, but uh, this is a little bit more interactive. You can call it uh, Academy as well, but this is uh, being recorded by some of the well-known uh, technical uh, person in the industry. If it is around uh, computer science, there will be a lot of uh, well-known uh, uh, technical person uh, recording themselves, teaching some of the uh, latest tech like .NET, JavaScript, or uh, React, and all of those uh, for you to continue learning. They also uh, provide uh, some tuition uh, help for the employee who want to continue their educations. 
Uh, I believe it's roughly about 2,000 or 3,000 or 5,000. I don't remember the exact number per year to help uh, employee to continue their education, either be bachelor degree or master degree. As long as you sign up for uh, an education, uh, you can reach out to your own manager and then uh, work out the reimbursement. They can help you with that part as well. And on top of that, uh, they also have uh library on campus and uh, online library as well so their catalog is pretty uh huge not only just around uh computer science or technology they have uh any of the latest book about Elon Musk about uh whoever uh like uh Bill Gates about Melinda Gates all of those will be available in the catalog you feel free to check out the book for the employee. I think it's one month uh, checkout time frame so that you, uh, before you can uh, check it back in. But yeah, uh, they're pretty supportive around education for uh, the employee themselves. And there's so many, so many more uh, program for the employee uh, that can sign up for, which I might have not known all of them. <laughs> And are some of those programs open up to the public online? You know how Google has its on YouTube, their authors series at Google, talks at Google. I think Microsoft also has some of their resources online. I remember seeing some yeah. of the training videos that you post. I can't remember the yeah. site if it's at, on Microsoft directly, but that would maybe be interesting yeah. for some of our people. Yeah. Uh, I believe Microsoft Training Academy is their own uh, online uh, academy for uh, the public. People can sign up and then uh, uh, actually learn on what people, uh, what Microsoft is delivering, what are the new feature around Azure, around uh, .NET, around the web. All of those are publicly publicly available, and they make it in a way like a training course is similar to Atomy, similar to uh, Khan Academy as well. So people can learn on all of them. Okay, some questions. I think a few more people just joined the session too. So let's see if we can get some questions. Feel free to ask any question, right? Even, even maybe you can ask him Bora, if he's met Bill Gates. <laughs> All right, Jimmy is saying something. So really I can't talk because of noisy background, but can you briefly explain how did you get into Microsoft and what are the requirement needs to fulfill uh, in order to work there? Hi, Jimmy. Uh, so I don't know if uh, everyone hears the question. So the question is, uh, can you briefly explain how did you get into Microsoft and what are the requirements uh, we need to fulfill in order to work there? Uh, the journey for me to get into Microsoft. So I firstly came here as a student and then after that, uh, after I finished my degree, I actually, uh, actually right before uh, I finished my degree, I applied uh, to work uh, at Microsoft. And it just, it's the same as a normal uh, job uh, application. You just apply, submit your application into the company. And then uh, they will set up, a, if, if they look, into your resume and they feel like, hey, uh, this guy is at least uh, qualified enough. So they will set up an interview for you. First, it's going to be a phone screen, uh, one hour with one of the uh, software engineer over there. They just want to like actually get to know you for one and also test your uh, basic uh, technical skill to make sure that you, you are who you are on your resume. And then after passing that uh, first uh, phone technical screen, there comes the full loop interview that you're going to be invited into the Microsoft campus uh, to have an interview with five or six people. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many people I met, either five or six around that. So it's going to be one hour per person. So they would test you on your technical skill. They would test you on your uh, social skill. They would test you on your communication skill, and how. Uh, and they also test you your uh, on your comprehension skill as well. So technical skill, uh, it's gonna be uh, your problem solving. How are you gonna solve this uh, computer problem? Like they're gonna give you a problem. They ask you to write the code to solve that. Uh, behavioral skill, they wanna 
to know how you handle situation. For example, um, how are you, uh, they gonna ask you, I don't know, maybe an, uh, one of the questions we just pull off the air. Uh, how are you gonna deal with uh, college, uh, your coworker who have a different opinion than you? Whatever you tell to that person, that person just simply shut it down, rejected it, wouldn't agree with you. How you handle that situation? So these are the sort of uh, question that uh, they would ask you. There's no right or wrong answer to your answer, but they want to understand how are you dealing with it, whether it makes sense, whether it's something you just simply coming up and uh, look up online or something like that. They, got, they want to get a feel of it. Uh, so yeah, uh, after this whole loop interview, you would just be waiting uh, for a day or two. You're gonna reach back, uh, be reached back out by a recruiter who said, uh, who coordinating uh, your interview, whether you successfully passed the interview or not. And yeah, after that, uh, I got into it, uh, Microsoft, and started working from there ever since. Uh, what are the requirements we need to fulfill in order to work there? Uh, of course, to be able to work here in the United States, uh, you have to have a visa that allow you to work here. <laughs> uh, they call it like uh, visa status, of course. Uh, I, I came here as a student. I got the uh, curricular practical training uh, CP, uh, CPTs that allow me to work here for about two years uh, uh, after school. All right, thank you. I hope I answer your uh, question, Jimmy. Let me know if uh, I haven't fully answered. Uh, next question is from Chun Li. Is it stressful working in Microsoft? Uh, I wouldn't call it stressful. Uh, depends on how you want, uh, how, how are you perceiving your job? If you love your job, if you love your team, every day at work is like a party. I mean, I was fortunately enough, uh, so especially my current team, they've been a, they've been a joy. Each, each person have their own personality. We have a person from uh, a, a, an American pe person who is so smart, but he's a bit shy. And then what it is doing is like, every time we all have any technical question that we don't know how to solve, we would reach out to him and he, he, he's like for sure gonna give you answer either right on the spot or later on or within a day or so. And then we have some people who just like good at cracking jokes. So all of these uh, characters come into play into a group that form a, a a group that help you uh, thrive and grow and then build a good product. And on top of that, it makes you also enjoy your workplace as well. And uh, I feel like the only time that uh, is stressful for me is uh, trying to deliver uh, something when we are really approaching the deadline of shipping a product. That's when we really have to put more hours into it. And this is pretty uh, normal in a, uh, a typical work environment. It's not just in, in Microsoft. It's not just in the tech field. I believe this is applied to every uh, sector at all. You have a deadline, you have to hit. And then when the deadline approach, you, you need to do whatever you can do to actually uh, hit that deadline and deliver your product or your, uh, 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 your job in the quality that you feel like you have to do. Hopefully I answer your question, Chun-Li. Uh, next come from uh, Udon. Were there algorithm and data structure coding tests? If so, what was it like? How hard would you say they were? Uh, I, I hope uh, the question is around uh, the interview getting into Microsoft. Yes, uh, there will be algorithm in data structure uh, in any of the text interview uh, here in the United States. Whatever company you're going through, they will ask you, hey, solve this, solve that Ryan algorithm and what, that stress, uh, what data structure you're gonna use to solve that problem and then solve it. And in terms of like difficulty level, uh, I don't know how much uh, you've known, um, 
lead code. So lead code is like leadcode.com is like one of the most popular uh, online uh, interview training platform out there. Uh, I mean, people here use it so widely. Uh, they rank algorithm by like easy, medium, and difficult. When you go to the interview, uh, most of the time, uh, they people wouldn't ask uh, difficult uh, level uh, algorithm because during that one hour, you are not just wanting to understand that technical difficulty, uh, that technical skill. You also want to know the person in terms of like how their brain's working, how they are solving their problem. Are they remembering it? Are they just uh, coming, uh, uh, picking something of their brain uh, by heart or something like that? The, you, we want to know how that uh, candidate is uh, navigating through the questions and then explaining the, along the way how they solve the problem itself. So I wouldn't say uh, uh, people would ask you the difficult level much. Uh, throughout my experience, I've seen both easy and uh, medium level a lot, especially medium, but not uh, that much uh, difficult at all. The only time uh, I've seen uh, the difficulty uh, level uh, question coming up it's just that interviewer just want to feel good about themselves they feel like hey i know this cool thing oh okay i'm gonna fail you if you don't know <laughs> i mean even i myself when i interview people for the job i wouldn't um ask them the difficult question because for once i i, I couldn't comprehend their uh, skill within that one hour trying to solve this one hour long question uh, myself all right, hope that's answer the questions. Uh, Handy, are there any internship open for college students that are not presented in the state? Uh, yes, I've heard about that uh, like for the past couple of years. Uh, they have, uh, so preferably they want their college students presented in the same uh, physical locations that um, uh, the company are. So for example, if uh, it is Microsoft uh, Singapore, they have internship for Singaporean who are uh, interested in applying for a uh, summer internship over there. Or if it is uh, uh, American, they all uh, have offices uh, throughout many areas of uh, the state. So they have internship for them. However, there's a, a selected uh, subset of uh, lucky few interns who's gonna be uh, fly, uh, flown into the United States to actually do internship. I don't know uh, really in detail in terms of like what are the criteria to apply for that program or what are the requirements to have, but uh, this kind of program, they mostly work, uh, they call it a, a, a college internship program that they work directly between uh, Microsoft and uh, the, the university there, they work between them and then they coordinate, uh, hey, uh, I want to get some of the good, uh, uh, what do you call, good uh, college student from India, from Nepal, and then you guy, I'm gonna hire you and then you can fly over and then uh, work uh, for the over the summer with one of the group over here in Microsoft. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't know in detail about that program, but uh, maybe feel free to look up online uh, on their careers.microsoft.com. Uh, they should have some uh, internship sections that explain more in terms of like what to do or some other program if the company has. Next one, uh, Davi. Hello, Bon. Could you share the tech stack you are working on your daily job? Could you also discuss your daily work if you don't mind? How is it like there? What do you want my methodology in your team apply? Okay. So the first question is, uh, what are the tech stack that I'm using at daily work? So I am currently using Angular, React, uh, uh, Azure. Uh, back end, of course, uh, at Microsoft, um, <laughs> people are migrating, all of the team are migrating into uh, Azure right now. And uh, of course, in the back end, uh, we're using uh, ASP.NET Core. And uh, I don't really use much uh, SQL in the current team, but uh, prior to that, I, I was doing heavily on uh, SQL and uh, some of the uh, Spark as well. 
And can you describe your daily work, if you don't mind? So daily work uh, during COVID era, get up in the morning, brushing my teeth, scraping my coffee, and then sit down on my desk and turn on uh, the computer. And then, uh, so initial, uh, I mean, I tend to like get some of the work done in the morning as much as I can, because uh, that's the uh, quiet time. Not many people are actually uh, coming online yet. So I would do a bunch of coding in the morning and then roughly about nine or 10, I would start uh, my email and then just look and see what's going on and then replying some of the email. And around like 10 or so, that's when the meetings start kicking in between either my team or uh, some other team that I have to work with uh, to, uh, come, uh, to uh, deliver the product and features. And throughout the day will be a bunch of communication, uh, some uh, distraction along the way. And then my days usually end around five or six uh, PM. I try to like end as early as like 5.30, but mostly uh, it's around six or so. And what development methodology? So uh, we are using Agile. Um, most of the team on Microsoft are doing Agile, but uh, this is not, uh, the by the book agile that uh, most people are that uh, you might have known uh, by agile here oh excuse me uh, we tend to uh, tailor it to my, uh, the team uh, itself so my team we pick it hey we're gonna do like a two week sprint and then we have a scrum daily and then uh, we have a uh, end of the spring planning and retrospective, and then see what could we do better to the next spin and stuff. So we tend to cut the retrospective because uh, my team is, uh, everybody know what they're doing. Everybody knows uh, how to perform that job already. So we don't tend to like go back and say, oh, this is really bad. What could have we done better and all of those. The, these type of communication, if there are any issue along the way, we tend to present it in the during the scrum time and then we learn from it and then we uh, kind of like take it from there and perform uh, it differently the next day. Not we don't wait till the next two weeks uh, to uh, learn from it. All right. Uh, from now, question from Chun Li Will they sponsor in turn that got selected that not presented in the US? Yes, uh, I think I just answered that question to Handy as well. They do have that program that actually sponsor a student from around the world uh, to uh, come and intern in the United States within the company. But uh, like I said, uh, that program, I don't know how that works. Uh, mostly from what I heard, they actually work between university and the company directly rather than individual applying through the websites. All right, I think I've gone through all the questions in the charts. Uh, wonder if anyone else has any question over the mic. I hear something, but not questions. Let's see if we can get some more people asking. I think we just had a few more people joining the call too. So they're coming in a bit late. So again, please feel free to ask any questions. I, a lot of people seem to be using the chat, but it would also be good to have some over the mic also. Any questions? Come on guys, this is a good opportunity. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, bro. Hey, Chetra. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, again. long time to see. How know. have you been? Doing good. How are you? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I got just a casual question. So now, right now, we know that a lot of tech companies that are working from home. So I just want to know how is your day working from home compared to working for, in the office? Do you miss the office? The office, <laughs> the office is really nice. Uh, yes. So I kind of miss the office uh, almost well a bit in the sense that you kind of like see 
people uh, in real life rather than through uh, the mm. webcam. And then you kind of like be able to walk around the hall and pop into uh, each other's office uh, and then just talk to them. That's uh, what I miss the most. And I also have uh, usually have lunch uh, with my coworker at work and we just mm. like kind of sit down and have lunch together. That's also uh, what I'm missing. Uh, in terms of like working from home life, um, I feel like it's busier and then you kind of like work longer comparing to uh, working <laughs> in the office because when you are in the office, you, you just go there and, and drive in and then go into your office, boot your machine and log in, do the work and then you shut down later on i mean lock off uh, the computer and then come back home and pretty much that is uh, it but when you are at home you are so i mean accessible to your computer and you are so accessible to your work you just simply yeah. walk into the room <laughs> boot on the machine and there you got the work so you tend to like work more hours and the second piece to it is the uh, uh the long hour part of it because people tend to like try to grab your time more to try to ping you more. Hey, I have this question, I have that question. And then communication over the mic, uh, over the, uh, uh, like over the mm. phone is not as convenient as popping up to someone's room and ask the question and then you get an answer in five mm -hmm. seconds. Over here, it takes time. So yeah. you tend to like work longer and that, this whole mm. uh, thing also being acknowledged by the leadership within the Microsoft itself. So they tend to, um, uh, they, they've been working on some improvement to make sure that mm. the employee get enough rest, get uh, enough uh, mm. break. So they push the employee to try to take as much holiday as possible. They set up uh, the uh, no meeting day so that actually employee can focus and doing that job rather than mm -hmm. coming in and out of the meeting all day long. So some of this program uh, and uh, downside of the work from home has been acknowledged by uh, the uh, uh, leadership and they've mm -hmm. uh, act on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, yes, anyway, about the communication. So I think since we start working from home, communication with employee could be, uh, yeah, not actually got us the same in the office. So in Microsoft, as I think that you will, of course, use Microsoft team, but other than that, do you have any uh, like other channel tool apart from Microsoft team that uh, could have uh, so the communication issue right now? Um, I mean, I mean, Microsoft team is just a mean to help you mm -hmm. communicate uh, between your peer, between your coworker. Uh, yeah. All in all, it also comes down to individual to actually use it and then uh, to the level that uh, achieving your own goal. Uh, personally, for me, uh, I, I don't really turn on my webcam much, but from time to time, if uh, I were to go into a, a presentation and go into a big group and presenting the feature or something, I tend to turn on my uh, webcam so that people are actually being able to engage with you uh, face to face. I mean, it's not the same as you were there in the room and then having eye contacts with the rest of the folk. But uh, these help alleviate uh, the communication gap that is just purely voice. And uh, just feel free to like uh, talk to people and chat with them uh, to ask any question that you have because uh, it's not as uh, easy as when you were back in the office anymore. So now uh, your only communication means to uh, reach and then try to unblock yourself is through a team or Slack or Zoom, whichever you can match them. Yeah, thank you for the answer. Yeah, yeah maybe cool. last one question. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. how, maybe can you share your habit to keep you healthy while working from home? Maybe everyone uh, wants to know that too. Yeah, your uh, habit. Healthy. I haven't <laughs> been to the gym for a while, if you want to know, but uh, eating healthy, <laughs> Eating healthy is like a really, really uh, main uh, thing that you should all uh, do if you can. I mean, do not eat so much red meat. Do not drink <laughs> yeah. too much wine. 
<laughs> eat a lot of vegetable. Uh, yeah, pretty much it. And don't forget to take a walk here and there and mm. ride your bicycle. Yep, keep your active life. I mean, in Cambodia, it's probably way easier. Over here, they yeah. close down the gym as well. You can't even uh, go to the gym, <laughs> so that sucks. <laughs> Looks like we have a couple more questions coming in on the chat from Davi oh, okay. and also from Jimmy. So Davi is asking about the difference between working for startup versus Fortune 500 companies. Uh, yeah, so uh, the difference is between working for a startup and a well-structured corporate uh, is that in startup, you tend to do a lot more and things are moving so fast as in like, uh, if you were to work for a bigger company before you are going to code something, before you are building a product, you would have to come up with a document explaining, hey, what am I doing? how I'm gonna solve this problem, what kind of uh, data uh, tech stack that I'm gonna use to solve this problem. All of this has to come up beforehand and you present it into a big team and you're gonna get a lot of feedback because so many people has opinion. They're gonna have, you have to come uh, back with a bunch of these feedback and consolidate them and then present it again to make sure that everybody buy off on that. But when you go to the startup world, uh, it's more of like, hey, I want to build this. For example, I want to build uh, uh, Zoom. Okay, now go and do it yourself. Give me, uh, what do you call it? A POC, a proof of concept, like a mini program that work within a week or two. And then once you come back and demo it to the whole team uh, in your startup uh, crew, they will be like, okay, let's do it. And then after that, you would be like, going off and then doing all of this within the next month or two. So in startup world, it's fast paced. It's not very structures, but the good thing is you have full control of what you want to do. And then you have more freedom of doing it. In the corporate world, they have this whole well-structured uh, way of how they see things are uh, functioning. So you have to play by that rule. And then you have to know how to do it. And then you, you're going to learn. And then people are going to give you all the feedback on how things are working anyway. But the good thing about it is like now you know how things are actually running in a bigger uh, field rather than just like uh, doing it yourself. Yeah, that's the most uh, uh, one of the biggest difference between the two. And, also and the next question. Oh, this is I'll go it. ahead, Chief. Yeah, it's a, a university recommendation. So if you're going to study computer science in Phnom Penh, what university do you <laughs> <recommend>? so... <laughs> I mean, I've been now of the uh, university field in Cambodia for quite a while. So I graduated back in 2001, 2002, 2003, 2000, 2005. I graduated in 2005. Um, so I don't know much like in terms of like quality uh, of the university that how thing, uh, how, what is their uh, uh, program, what are they teaching in school and what are the languages that they use, the tech stacks. But back then when I was there, uh, Rory, Rory University of Phnom Penh is like one of uh, the most well-known university and they have uh, one of the uh, good program out there comparing to the other school uh, out there. But in terms of like now, I would suggest uh, asking people around, see what they are studying, especially the most, uh, the fresh grad, like uh, those who just graduated from uh, college uh, in Cambodia. Just uh, go there and, and try to ask them what uh, they are learning in uh, college. Have they learned this thing and that thing and that thing? And then uh, you kind of like get that list back and then uh, make your own judgment in terms of like, are these things translate into what people are looking on the market right now? So, I mean, by market here, it can be at the US market or in the Cambodian market. If people are looking to hire a lot of like React, React Native, and then uh, if the university is teaching you in uh, your year four C++. So yeah, you know, make your own judgment based on that. But if you're going for a job like uh, uh, like our iOS app developer, maybe Objective-C is your aim. So 
think about it and then uh, ask around and then see which uh, university uh, providing all of this uh, skill that uh, can actually uh, prepare you for the job market. Okay, uh, another, oh wait, that's all I think. Oh, what university in Phnom Penh will you recommend? Ah, that's it. There is one coming in now. How did you, um, oh, how did you get into the master's program at Maharishi University? Uh, university. Uh, so, back then i was uh back then when i decided okay it's my time to actually continue my education because uh, after school in 2005 i've been working for roughly about two years and i decided okay i really want uh, to uh continue my master degree so i look around i apply for some scholarship uh i didn't get any of them some of them i went to the interview round and then i get I didn't get them. And then, I mean, I didn't stop there. Uh, rather than just like, okay, beating myself to bed and crying, I was just like, okay, what else can I do? What are the means that I can apply to uh, go and then get my education abroad? So I just look up online, search around, hey, university in the United States, what are the school? And then uh, came up with a bunch of like lists of school here and there. And uh, I know uh, one of my coworker, uh, she recently when uh, uh, came to the United States for school. So I kind of like reached out to her and then asked her information about the school better. And then right after that, I just applied to the school. I went uh, to their website and looked at what are the admission process and then go from step one, step two, step three, just go through each of the process there and then from there on, uh, they would do some uh, uh, admission uh, testing to make sure that you are who you are and test some of the technical skill as well. And after that, they gave the admission and then you just simply go through uh, the rest of the step by going to the uh, embassy for the interview for the visa. And once you get the visa, you get the plane ticket and then come here and for school. <laughs> And what was the focus of my research? So uh, my program is not a research base. So uh, this is gearing toward professional as well. So that means uh, there's no uh, research paper that I have to write. Uh, at the school, it's more of like, hey, you're gonna go through all of this program and each of them, you will uh, take a test uh, after you finish each of the course and make sure that uh, you pass each of the uh, tests and at the end of all the tests that I have done. And if I get enough uh, credit and uh, GPA, I would graduate, which uh, I did. Yeah. And I like, your, uh, I like your advice on being proactive and finding a university, yeah. because I think a lot of students here just wait or just apply to the ones that they see that are announced. Yep. All universities in the U.S. have scholarship programs and sometimes just Correct. being out and being proactive, I think, is a, is a yep. fantastic strategy. Can we get one last question? If not, I OK, good. We have one. I thought we had um, I, that saw this way. <laughs> okay, so let, let me ask let me ask one last question then. Uh, yeah. On the future of work, um, you know, there's a lot of talk now that after COVID, because of what we've learned about going online and working from home, that the the whole professional work life uh, will be changed. Right, that more yeah. people now will be working from home less business travel, less in-person type events. But I also wonder if it could be the opposite, where people are now so sick of doing things online all the time <laughs> that there's almost a return to physical, right? And I see that yeah. on the education side with our students after maybe one semester with online education, they couldn't wait to be back in the classroom physical, right? So I'm yeah. just wondering if there might actually be a backlash where suddenly people actually want to have physical meetings and physical work. So I'm just curious to have your perspective on where do you see this going in the next couple of months? Uh, After personally, oh, sorry. Uh, personally speaking, I am seeing it's gonna be a, a hybrid between the two. 
it's not gonna be a full back to office uh, 100% or it's not gonna be a full uh, online 100%. There will be always people who prefer, okay, I love my uh, uh, home. I just wanna stay here. I don't wanna commute one hour to work at all. And there will be some other people, oh my God, I am so sick of my kids. I cannot stay home anymore. I need to go to the office, otherwise I'm not gonna get the work done. So yes, the company actually uh, initiated the conversation around that. And then they have been asking for survey uh, they send out a way to employee, hey, how do you want uh, your work to be? Do you want to see it 50-50? Do you want to see it like 20-30, uh, 20-80, or 70-30, or something like that? But personally speaking, the best way for me, uh, I mean, to ease back into the office after the whole COVID is over is to great gradually uh, having people uh, deciding on what they want. As in like, okay, we're going to have you 50 working from home and then 50 working in the office and then see how you feel within uh, after the next six months. Do you feel like you become more productive? Do you feel like, hey, this is better for you in terms of like work-life balance and also uh, how are you engaging with your uh, co-worker at the office as well? So maybe after that, uh, people are going to learn and then study from it and they feel like, okay, now I'm getting used to it and then I don't want to change that rhythm anymore. Or they feel like, okay, this is still not working and they're going to fine tune it later on. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So if there are Sorry. no- Oh, great. Please. Yeah. Yeah, I have one, one last question. Um, how do you um, develop yourself or um, stay updated to like, you know, like skills and um, trends and all that as an engineer. So I'm talking about like yeah. the field itself. So maybe yeah. are there books or resources that you would suggest or courses, you know? Um, so some of the, uh, a couple of the cool thing that I kind of uh, uh, used myself uh, in the past couple of years are some of the newsletters. So, uh, for me personally, I am more into web technology and uh, web development and mobile development. So I've signed up for some of the uh, newsletter that every week they would send me any cool thing about uh, JavaScript. What are the new thing? What are the thing that coming up? And they would send me uh, information about React. Like, hey, here are some of the React library that people has been using recently, and it can become popular, and all of those. So that uh, kind of newsletter, it's it's like a spam to you. But personally speaking, once a week, it's not a spam to me, and I feel like this is helping me keeping me up to date on what's happening out there because otherwise I would have to actually spend hours and then Google or go into Reddit and read this and read that. But this is like a summary of what's happening to me. And uh, other than that, uh, from there on, I kind of like, if I am interested in any of the topic that mentioned to me on this newsletter, I would either go off on YouTube or I would use a plural site like the, um, uh, the company provided. And also recently they give out a LinkedIn uh, study. Uh, I believe that might be uh, public as well. I, uh, people just need to try out LinkedIn. Uh, they have a, a similar yeah, platform yeah. that you can uh, actually uh, study some of uh, the skill as well online. So those are how I've been like, kind of like keep myself up to date. And from time to time, believe it or not, I'm kind of like uh, spying around in terms of like uh, the job announcement out there. See how people, uh, what are the job that people are actually looking in terms of like software engineer, so senior software engineer, principal uh, engineer, what are the skills they're looking mm. there? And that way you kind of like understand the, the market trend. And then based on that, if you think that, oh, this is not, uh, this is something people are actually searching, but I don't know about it. What can you do? So I would just go off and then uh, do my own research, Google, YouTube. And surprisingly, YouTube really have, uh, I mean, of course you need to know how to search, but once you know, there are so many good content. There's so many good people putting so many good content out there. So uh, just look on it and then uh, study from that. I mean, yes, we can spend our time on Facebook, but hey, YouTube is better, right? 
<laughs> it looks like one okay. more question. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I think we have one more question in the chat. Um, okay. I'm an iOS developer at a Japanese company in Phnom Penh. What do you think about the future of mobile development? Is it a good idea to stick to only a particular platform? Uh, I would say if you could, you should diversify. I mean, diversifying your own skill is not uh, a bad idea because when you go out there, you can lazy, uh, laser focus on iOS development, iOS development, iOS development. But what if somebody else looking for, hey, I want somebody to do React Native, that is cross platform between uh, iOS and uh, Android development. So you, you kind of miss out that opportunity. But if you can actually diversify your portfolio better, uh, your chances are like broader. If there are like, for example, if there can only be like three IRS a job, but there might be like 10 uh, React Native job that uh, they're looking for somebody who can do this cross uh, platform development. But being said that, that doesn't mean that uh, you should force yourself and push yourself uh, to be uh, uh, like multi-task or multi-domain uh, person. If you feel like, hey, I really like iOS development, be good at it, laser focus on it, and let's make sure you are on top of it and the best that you know. As long as you are the best on your skill, whatever skill you have, there's always somebody who wants to hire you. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all the questions. Yeah, so um, so again, thank you very much for spending yeah, no your Friday evening with us. <laughs> we actually had a lot of really good technical questions via the chat also, which is great to see. And uh, again, take care during this time of COVID and let's hope that you know things get back to normal or the new normal, I guess, with uh, the hybrid structure of working and studying as we move forward into 2021. But again, yeah very much appreciate your time uh, with us um, this evening, your time this morning here and have a great weekend. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Steve, for having me over. Uh, I don't know, uh, do you think you have like a couple more uh, minutes? I just want to like give a couple more bullet points as a key sure. takeaway if possible. Definitely, definitely. Oh yeah, uh, so some of the key takeaway that I would love people uh, to get out of this whole uh, conversation Q&A session as well. Uh, number one is kind of believe in yourself. I mean, each of us can go and compete on any stage with enough uh, education, with enough support, with enough skill that we equip ourselves, we can go uh, and compete, I don't know, US, Singapore, Australia. I'm sure we all know somebody like uh, we know Cam this Cambodian working here, that Cambodian working there, this country and that country. So we all started back in Cambodia the same way as everybody has. We went to the same school and some might have gone to an international school in Cambodia, some might have gone to a public school in Cambodia, but everything that we've done in Cambodia prepare us as an individual and then we all can move on from there and then learn more along the way and then we can go and then compete on the uh, international stage the same as anyone else. Uh, the second point is uh, do not restrict yourself uh, so much in terms of like options. Uh, like Steve just mentioned earlier, hey be proactive in terms of like uh, finding university uh, to study. I mean, at first you might not know, oh my God, how can I go and get a scholarship to study abroad? Or how can I go and work at this company? You just need to pass your own uh, pathway to there. So for example, if you feel like, oh, I want to go and study in the United States, you would be like, huh, okay, maybe first I'm going to look for a scholarship. What are the scholarships? Uh, what was that scholarship uh, the U.S. Uh, provided? I forgot the name. Fulbright? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so Fulbright is probably the most well-known uh, scholarship out there uh, in Cambodia that you can apply. 
go and apply it out and then try out yourself. And if you fail, you fail. And you would just like look back at yourself. Okay, why would I fail? I don't have enough qualification. And then you just like, okay, if I miss this, I'm gonna learn and study myself and prove myself on that point. But then do not restrict it to just food, right? Okay, maybe I should try Australian award as well. Okay, maybe I should try a UK uh, scholarship as well. And then just be proactive and search for it and ask around and ask people. And then if all scholarship fail, and then in my case, I mean, I apply a couple of scholarships and I fail of them, all of them. I was like, okay, all right, what else can I do? I look up online, I went on Google. Imagine way back in 2007, 2006, that uh, internet is still expensive. I had to like spend my uh, salary going to the, uh, uh, internet cafe, like, I don't know, one hour for $1 or something, just sit there doing nothing but Google and go through our, all the university website and reading up and see what they are doing. Uh, next one uh, is the, probably the last as well. Be humble, uh, but confident. I mean, being humble goes a long way. Nobody loves people being arrogant. So just be nice and project your confidence through being uh, humbling to one another. And people will actually love you. And then uh, from there on, what you don't know what's gonna take you either professionally or uh, personally in your friendship as well. Yeah, that's all uh, I wanna say. And thank you, Steve, again, for having me over and everybody for asking questions. Thank you very much. This was fantastic. And uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, so wishing everyone a good weekend. Yeah, and hopefully everybody have a good uh, holiday season over there in Cambodia. <laughs> and happy Thanksgiving in the U.S. Thanks. Thanks. You too. Bye bye. bye.